to my channel welcome if you're new i am going to be reorganizing my bookshelves so let's show you what we have going on right now right now we have two over here i don't have a wide angled lens so you can't see all of it sadly but yeah this is what we have going on these are the idanas by ikea i got this new one today it's empty so if you can see like we have some that are horizontal some that are literally just like on top because i don't have any more space to put them in vertically um some of these there they're just like piled on top and they're a mess and clutter so i'm gonna rewind and show you guys um, me building and putting it in my room so we're gonna roll those clips here i stole this chair from the eras tour in philadelphia Now that we're back, we are going to start organizing. I'm gonna put on some YouTube and I don't know how I'm gonna do this. I'll probably just have it in like fast forward and I'll just like explain after what I did. So like up here, I have all of my like Penelope Douglas, Lauren Asher, Elsie Silver, and Al Kennedy books, but I think I'm gonna have like, oh, and I have Anna Huang. So like Anna Huang, and Lauren Asher kind of give me the same vibe, so I want their books to be on the same shelf. Elle Kennedy gives me a different vibe, so I want her books to be on a separate shelf. So I think I'm gonna do, I also don't know if I should do, like right now I have this whole shelf is fantasy, and this one's all romance, and all of my literary fiction and stuff in my classics are on a different shelf, which we're not gonna get into that because so far it's good as is. It's just my romance and fantasy that we're working with today. I don't know if I should do romance or if I should do like romance and then fantasy down here but I kind of like the vertical organization because I used to do horizontal um, but I think I like the vertical better so I think I'm gonna leave this one as is for now um, and then as I grow I'll probably turn these into fantasy down here as well but we're going to just continue with these being romance Watching Grey's Anatomy. I haven't watched Grey's Anatomy in like five years. Okay, okay, right, let's get to it. but I am going to put my Colleen Hoover on the bottom shelf. Um, it's been center of attention for a long time and I think I've just grown out of Colleen Hoover. I don't plan on reading or buying any new books so I think I'm just going to leave them down below. I'm not going to get rid of them because I did enjoy the books I did read and I might read what I still have here that I haven't read. Um, I just don't really want that to be in all of my videos anymore and when I start filming more frequently these bottom shelves won't be on display on camera so I think we know just put Colleen down there I feel so bad um, because I love this shelf it just feels like very like, book talk 2022 when I first started reading now I started reading in 2021 yeah it gives me like 2021 vibes so it's an end of an era but I'm not getting rid of them just moving her <laughs>
so don't know what to do. Um, this is what it looks like right now. I have space, and I'm just like, I'm gonna have open space because there's no way I can fill them out. I've kind of just like put everything over there now that I'm like looking at it. And like, now that I'm also looking at it, I like having books horizontal. I know people don't like that, but I really do like to have like books horizontal and then vertical books on top I think it just makes it look fuller especially because there's a lot of space here I just like to do that I think I think it's all I'm gonna show you and I'll come back with a bookshelf tour in a little bit it's quite literally um four hours five hours later and it was like every five minutes I was not liking how I was organizing it I finally came to a decision like it's going to be empty like these three shelves are pretty much all empty except for like these books here and then like all of these are gonna have space but it might not look good on camera but in my brain it makes sense because they're gonna be filled with books that I already plan to order in the future um I'm not gonna show you guys in depth today because it's literally 10 p.m. and there's no light in my room other than like artificial light and I don't want to film with that so we are going to film sometime when it's sunny and I don't know when the next day is going to be sunny number one and also the next day I have off I work for like eight days straight so it's going to be a while until I see you guys next time but take it away future me I guess so the time has come it is a few days later I had to work and I didn't have time because every time I come home it's like 11 30 at night so now we have daylight and i want to film my bookshelf tour currently as of march 2024 so as you can see there's a lot of blank spaces and i see that as room for growth and it might like not look as pretty but it's probably gonna get filled up soon in the next coming two years a year pretty much three shelves here that are practically empty and then my shelf here is pretty empty so I can add some new fantasy books because I have definitely been entering my fantasy era. So we're going to get into it. I'm going to show you guys these shelves and I'm going to show you where my literary fiction books are as well. I haven't touched them at all, um, like reorganizing wise, but I'm just going to show you them anyway because they are a part of my book collection. So we are going to start with my mystery shelf. I have Twilight up there just because I didn't really want it on my shelves, but I love Twilight so it still gets its own little um, spot. I also have a collection. I found this at a thrift store and it was like, eight. it was my most favorite find and it's still my first favorite thrift find. I love that book. Anyway, here is all of my mysteries. We have most of my YA. Actually, I think up here are all of my adult uh, mysteries, which I don't have many of. So that's why there's only like four or five of them. And then these are all of like the YA, all of my inheritance games. This one's actually, you're like, why do you have two copies of this? This one's the Barnes & Noble exclusive edition. And if you haven't seen that book, I would pull it out, but I didn't, I don't know why it's all the way at like the middle of that stack. That's actually really annoying. I'll find a way to display that better, hopefully soon. I was reorganizing these shelves for so many hours that like, it's not perfect, but if I reorganized any longer, I was going to lose my sanity because I was getting so stressed. <laughs> so that's all of my mysteries. A lot of these are unread. I've only read like I think 10 or 12 of these books just because I'm not a mystery girly. Like I try to get into mystery but I don't think I'm reading the right ones so leave recommendations down below. We get into my adult fantasy but there's also some YA. There's not really- they're not organized the best okay? It's just like what makes sense in my brain. So we have The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue, my fourth wing, um, the Southerners Book Club's Guide to Slaying Vampires, The Atlas Six. I just ordered that one, so that one's pretty new. And then The Night Circus. We have Powerless by Lauren Roberts and The Heart of the Raven Prince, simply because I don't really know where else to put them. Then we have my Sarah J. Mass books, and I'm actually sitting right next to the Queen of Shadows. That's why it's missing from that little spot there, but I'm currently reading Queen of Shadows. Um, but yeah, this is like my favorite shelf. It's just so pretty. I love how they all fit perfectly in the shelf. Oh, I also have this little Beauty and the Beast music box because if you know, you know, Akatar is pretty much like a Beauty and the Beast retelling, the first book there. With this shelf, we're getting into the YA selection and this is kind of all YA as where the other shelf was YA mixed in with adult fantasy. This is just 
all strictly YA because I have more YA fantasy than I do adult fantasy. Divine Rivals duology and then we get into a Caraval and a Curse for True Love stuff, Dance of Thieves, uh, The Daughter of the Pirate King, To Kill a Kingdom, The Cruel Prince, and The Scarlet King of Battle. I actually have not read a single book over there. <laughs> That's so sad. I have not read any of those, but they're all really popular. I read the entire Shadow Me series, which is what we have going on here. That nice, satisfying stack of matching covers is Shatter Me, and I read that all last year, and I really enjoyed it. So she gets her own little spotlight there. Okay. Down here, it's a little dark, but we have the entire Grishaverse series. I have read most of them. The only one I haven't read is Rule of Wolves, and I have simply just putting it off because it's the last book in the Grishaverse series, and I don't know if I want to end it off. I also feel like it's been too long because I read the Grishaverse books in 2021, so I think I'm going to need to do a reread before I complete Rule of Wolves because I'm a little iffy on all the details, but then we have all of my Cassandra Clare books. We have the Immortal Instruments, Infernal Devices, so we have all of those. They're all of my dystopian and middle grade books. If you can tell, we have the Harry Potter series, which I've only read the first three books in 2022, so I am a little behind <laughs> when it comes to Harry Potter. The Rick Riordan, Percy Jackson books. On top, we have the Lightlark series, but I have it there. Then we have the Maze Runner, all of my dystopian books really. Just went through these stacks of this shelf right here, and now we're gonna go we went down and now we're gonna go up. This shelf here, we have all of my YA books. I, or my YA romances more specifically. I like to keep them all together simply because they're all kind of like the same um, genre of books. But then again, most of the authors who strictly write YA, just easier to put them all together. Um, I've read quite a few of these. A Thousand Boy Kisses, which was one of my first YA romances and of course, The Summer I Turned Pretty was like my second YA romance, um, but yeah, I kind of grew out of YA romance, so I haven't really been growing this collection here, so it's just perfect that it fits all on one shelf right now. My favorite, I can't, I can't even lie, we have the Boys of Tommen series. I am collecting like every cover that gets released of the Boys of Tommen series. We have the new published version, which I have the rest of the series coming in the mail. I also pre-ordered Taming 7, so I should have the whole collection here shortly. Then we have the pre-published version where I have two copies of Redeeming 6. Then we have the alternate covers of the Boys of Toman series, which are again self-published and just beautiful covers. I love them. We have the UK editions of Magnolia Parks, just the first two books. I have Magnolia Parks and Daisy Hates, and I'm going to be saving for the rest of them because the shipping from the UK to um, America or US where I am, it is a little expensive, so I haven't ordered all of them yet, but that collection will com complete soon. And then we have just the OG romance books that started started it all. <laughs> They're really just the OG TikTok, book talk books. Um, we have Emily Henry, the Christina Lauren books, uh, Ali Hazelwood, Lucy Score, and Abby Jimenez. Of course, we have Archer's Voice there alone, and uh, Tessa Bailey. Bailey. On the top shelf, we have a little bit more of new adult, darker romances. We have all my Penelope Douglas books. We have a Sophie Lark book there. Um, my Dark Romeo, and of course my original self-published self version of the Off Campus series, and of course her new series, which is The Graham Effect, and I have not read that one yet. Moving over from that shelf, we have a little bit more space for growth over here, but if you can tell, I have that little cowboy boot. I actually bought that for my great-grandfather before he passed away. And I bought it for him at like one of those, our school used to have like a Christmas sale so you could buy little gifts for your family before Christmas and I bought that for him. I have it there because he had cowboy romance and I thought it would be cute to have there. So we have of course my Anna Huang books. These are kind of just like the independent published versions of all of my favorite books or books that I know I'm probably going to like if I haven't read them yet. We have Anna Huang's The Twisted Love series. We have her new series, The King of Wrath. Um, we have The Dream of Billionaires by Lauren Asher, which goes into Love and Love Redesigned, then the Dirty Air series, and the Chestnut Spring series by Elsie Silver, and then I didn't really know where to put my Mariana Zapata book because I haven't read it, and I haven't read, I don't have any other Mariana Zapata books, so it's just 
all by its lonesome there. This shelf is one of my favorite shelves, honestly, even though it's not the cutest, it's just plain, but it, is, it has some of my favorite books. We have just some um, kind of runoffs of the OG TikTok books, but also like we have the hating game that is just how OG can you get from that? Then we come down here and we have Addicted series All By It's Lonesome. Again, just because I kind of wanted to put them together but I didn't have space. But I feel like these books give me the same found family vibe. So they're all there. Then down here we have some of my independent books because they're just longer. Like if you know, you know, the independent published versions are always like, they're like bigger in size. And I didn't know where else to put them. So I just put them all here. And yeah, it's my Colleen Hoover books simply because I didn't know where else to put them. And I am kind of past that point in my life where I read or buy more Colleen Hoover books, but I still enjoy them and I I have a appreciation because I started off with Colleen Hoover. So she's just down here, but no hate to her. I love the books and I love the way they look because I have so many of them. I just didn't want them on display in all of my videos anymore. So they're just down here now. But that is it for my romance, fantasy, and mysteries. Some published Wattpad that I haven't ever read, but I have it for some reason. I have the Bridgerton series, Nicholas Sparks books, and then all my Christmas and MLM books, just because they are not like books that I commonly talk about or plan on reading anytime soon. Other than the Nicholas Sparks books, because I read Nicholas Sparks when I'm in the mood to watch his movie, and then I reread the book and then I rewatch a movie. So I have all of that, but these are all just like random books that just don't fit, fit into the genre of a specific genre of organization that I have going on. So now I'm going to show you my other books, which are all kind of either just general fiction or middle grade books, whatever I have, I'll show you that next. We have all of my Taylor Jenkins Reads books over here, as well as just some of my very popular YA books as well, like with my John Green here. I don't know, it's a little random. I think this is a memoir. Yeah, this is a memoir. Seeing it in real time, I'm reorganizing here. Collections of classics. I don't read a lot of classics, but I have Little Women's in there. I have a few copies of Little Women right in there. So I also have some more books, but they're on display, my fancier um classics my mom uses them as coffee table books I have a comic of the walking dead the first one and another graphic novel of this is like the first ever graphic novel i ever read and it's called awkward by svetlana Chim chimakova and this one was <laughs> it's gone through it because i remember reading this literally like i read it all the time and it's simply just a middle school experience book and it's about a girl who just feels awkward and then it's also like a little cute romance so i just really enjoyed it when i read it i think i read this when i was like eight plus eight to like ten because i would reread it all the time so it's not in the best of shape but i keep it on display because it's just so cute and i love it so it's a little section here is all of my memoirs i just moved everything i know about love down here but we have wonder i don't really know is that considered a memoir but it's a story based on a true story as well as um beautiful boy and then i'm glad my mom died matthew perry's friends lovers and the big terrible thing john green's book glennon doyle i don't know why i wanted to say glenn again but untamed by glennon doyle which i actually want to read because i haven't heard anything like i know that it's popular because i see it everywhere but i actually haven't heard anybody talk about it and then um i just wanted to show you guys this book just a shout out to matthew perry of course but i read this right when he released it and it is the most highlighted book that i own so read this book if you are a fan of matthew perry or if you are somebody who wants to learn more about addiction and stuff of along those lines because he's just like his story was so close to home and i really appreciated all the things that he went through so yeah i just wanted to say that <laughs> so that was it for today guys i hope you enjoyed my mess of a video where i organized and then showed you guys my bookshelves again it's not perfect but for now it is and hopefully i can fit some new growth books in just an excuse to go book shopping um yeah thank you guys for watching go check out my other content 
and social media is down below as always and i'll see you guys sometime else somewhere else i'll see you guys see you guys next time bye